Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about pan pastels. I want to do a little bit of an intro on what they are as well as how to use them. So, first things first, what are they? They are soft pastels that have been compressed into a pan. They are a little bit different to conventional soft pastels, partly because they are very highly pigmented, but they do also work a little bit differently too. So you can buy them as sets. I bought the portrait set, but you can also buy the pan separately, which is what I did with the black because the portrait set doesn't come with the black. There are other sets you can get as well, but the portrait set had most of the colors I needed. Now, one of the benefits of pan pastels is that they are very highly pigmented. This means that a little bit of pan pastel goes a long way. And you can see that with what I'm doing here. One thing to note about them, which you can see easier when it's down on the paper, is that they do look a little bit glittery. But I don't think it's a bad thing. It's something I notice when I'm up close, but from further away, I can't see the glitteriness and it just makes the color pop even more. Although pan pastels are soft pastels that have been compressed, they are used in a completely different way to soft pastels. Pan pastels are designed to be applied almost like a dry paint. You can mix the colors together very similar to paint and you use tools to apply them as opposed to applying them directly onto the paper. Generally speaking, they are quite a bit more expensive than soft pastels. That said, a little bit does go a long way and there isn't a huge amount of waste. Because of the pan, you're not getting loads of excess dust all over the paper. All of the pastel is able to be used. And I've probably had my pan pastels for about a year now. And as you can see, I'm not getting near to the end with them. There is still loads of pan pastel left. If you buy them as a kit, you get a couple of applicators that you're able to test out. So with the portrait set, I got a couple of applicator knives, a couple of sponges, as well as these smaller applicators. And I think it's best to try them all out because what works well for one person may not work quite as well for another. You could try using some makeup sponges to put the pan pastels on, but to be honest, I did try this and I found it didn't work anywhere near as well as the pan pastel ones. To keep the tools that you've got in good condition for as long as possible, it is worth giving them clean. I just wash them with warm soapy water, give them a really good rinse and leave them to dry before I next use them. You do find that you get a little bit of staining on them, but that doesn't actually come through onto the paper once they've been cleaned. It's just a stain, it's not that the colour is actually still there. Now pan pastels are designed to be used mixed media, and there's, for me personally, two main ways that I use them. I like to either use them on Bristol board, and I put them down as a base and then use colour pencil on top to add in any detail or I use them on pastel matte paper and use pastel pencils on top to add the detail that way. And to be completely honest, I like both equally. I think it works really well on both types of paper. And I find that the color pencil and the pastel pencil goes over the pan pastel very, very easily. I would say that I find the pan pastel goes down much, much smoother on the pastel mat. Sometimes if you're not careful on the Bristol board, it can look a little bit uneven, but it's not to the point that I wouldn't use that method. For however you choose to use them, it is important to learn how to mix them because it's unlikely that the colors you've got are going to be the exact color that you want. So I've got three different ways that you can mix pan pastels. First up, you can mix them on the applicator. This is where you take a little bit of the first colour, put that on your applicator, take a little bit of the second, and then put that straight onto your paper. Now this method is good in that it is very, very quick and easy. That said, you don't really know what colour is going to end up on the paper when you do it this way. You can get a bit of an idea, but you don't know exactly. Another way that you can mix is by layering. So you can put down one colour on the paper, find your other colour that you want to mix with it, put that on top, and they'll sort of blend on the paper. That's probably my favorite method. And my third method is by using a cheap piece of paper like printer paper and almost using it like a palette. So you can see here, I'm able to take two colors and very easily mix them together. But because this is just cheap paper, the pan pastel doesn't stick to the paper. So I'm easily able to pull it back off and use it on my art paper. And with this way, I am able to see what color I've got before it goes down on the paper. The last thing I want to talk to you about is how light fast pan pastels are. That is how fast they will fade in normal lighting conditions. Now with soft pastels, there isn't an industry standard for testing. So pan pastels are tested in the same way that color pencils are tested. They're exposed to light and then given a rating from one to four, depending on how much they fade. 
You can see all of the individual light fast ratings for each color on the Pan Pastel website, but by and large, they're mostly four stars. I found a couple of three stars and I think only one two star, but even the two star light fast rating is expected to last at least 25 years. So it's not a short period of time. But of course you only need to worry about this if you're doing a commission for someone or wanting to have your art up on the wall for at least 25 years. So I do like pan pastels a lot. It's not something that I would use on its own. It is something that I would always do as mixed media. I'm just not able to get the sort of detail that I like for my drawings with pan pastels. But I do find them a quick, easy and fun way to put down the base of a drawing. I will be doing a drawing soon using pan pastels. So do keep an eye out for that. I will give a full commentary on everything I'm doing to create the base. But until then, if you found this video helpful, give it a like. Don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing guys, I'll see you in the next one.